Welcome everyone once again to the EULA TV. I'm Dr. Mohamed Shipa, an experimental rheumatologist from University College London. And I'm sure you are very keen to hear more about CAR T cell. And when it comes to CAR T cell, we are very, very fortunate to have the expert on this field. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and here you go. We have Professor George Scher from Germany. Welcome. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you for you the invitation. Much. Thank you very much. So your talk on CAR T-cell has been deeply anticipated by everyone and, and everyone very keen to learn. And I just wanted to ask you, what do you think in terms of the looking at the landscape of the CAR T-cell, where we are standing now? Yeah, well, uh, I think the, the field is very new, right? It started in 2021, so it's, it's really rather new, but I think it has, uh, uh, is uh, uh, on a quite high speed because we saw several phase one, two studies popping up. Totally, there are about 40 studies now in autoimmune diseases with CAR T cells, which uh, pertains mostly to rheumatology, but also neuroimmunology. And uh, there are both big pharma and also smaller biotechs in place doing uh, organizing studies, but there are also some academic studies also. So I think we will, in the next uh, one, two years, we will see a lot new data based on these phase one, two studies, mostly on safety, but also preliminary efficacy. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So let me ask you one more uh, question. Like, as a rheumatologist, obviously, we are concerned and careful about the side effects. Uh, so do, do you want to highlight something about the cytokine storm syndrome? Like, to your mind, how severe are they and how common are they? Yeah, rheumatologists are always very careful people, as you know. We are also rheumatologists, and uh, that's also because our diseases are not malignant diseases. They are very severe, but not malignant, and therefore actually safety of CAR T cell therapy in autoimmune diseases is of utmost importance. Uh, so what we see now is about 100 patients have been in total treated in the world, roughly, uh, and there is not a single case of uh, higher grade cytokine release syndrome and almost no um, neurotoxicity. So that's very, that's very good, I would say. So the, the classical uh, toxicity of CAR T cells, which is known from cancer, is not so much seen in autoimmune disease. And the simple reason for that is that there's just l much less target cell engagement, right, uh, in autoimmune disease than in cancer. Mm. So that looks pretty good, and um, of course, more patients need to be treated, but I think the initial signal is not discouraging, I would mm. say. Mm. Well, well, fantastic. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so let me ask you about something about the development. I know that uh, the allergenics are on the horizon, so obviously there are many things that are coming up. So what do you think about um, these, these new development? Yeah, so far only data exist on autologous CAR T cell therapy, but there is a lot of effort to do good allogeneic project, uh, products, which are basically off, so-called off-the-shelf products, where, which are made by, from, a, in the, from a health individual, and then can be actually uh, given to several patients by gene editing, so they don't have to they reduce the immunogenicity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it might be interesting in autoimmune disease because you don't need a long presence of the CARs. Mm -hmm. uh, so an allogeneic approach could be beneficial, uh, but we have to see the data, right? So mm. several companies are moving now in the allogeneic field, having initial data from lymphoma, and moving now to autoimmune disease, and that's very interesting. So what I, I, I think that the car feed will develop. It's an evolutionary process uh, in developing new products, and we will see what are the best. Uh, so that has to be learned. Of Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, like, you know, it's probably one of your favorite questions, like deep, deep immunology reset about the CAR T cell. You want to mm. make a comment about that? Yeah, I like the reset story because that's like the button on the computer, right? You, you, nothing works anymore, everything is distorted, and then you, you click the reset button and the system works again. And I think that, uh, that uh, a comparison is, is pretty interesting because, uh, because you can stop the drugs, right? And I think that the, the really cool thing in the car field what for us for as, a clinician, uh, as clinicians is interesting that you can so stop the therapy, right? And, and you have year-long drug-free remission uh, what we see, and that uh, can only be seen if there is some kind of immunological reset, as you say. Yeah. Right, you are. And lastly, which is my favorite question, is it going to be a game changer? Yes, it is a game changer if you get in the majority of patients drug-free, long-term drug-free remission. I think this is necessary because it's not a simple procedure, right? It's not like an aspirin, you, you take it and everything is fine. Uh, it is actually a complex procedure, it's also expensive, but if it uh, allows young people to go in long-standing drug-free remission, then it's a game-changer. <laughs>
So we have to collect more data, I think, whether this is true, how many patients achieve that, and what are the right patients actually to be treated. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. It's been a fascinating talk. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us, and, and, and thanks, for, um, thanks for your time. Thank you very much for the invitation. Have a good Congress. Thank you very much.